and I'm a chemist. I'm also very inquisitive by nature. Um, growing up when I was a little girl, whenever my grandmother comes to visit and then somebody falls ill or gets injured, she quickly gets what nature can provide and then make it as a remedy to alleviate the pain, I'm sorry, to reduce the pain or cure the ailment. And we were looking at her as someone that was very typical, as a traditional and then outdated. But it never bothered her. But I was, as I was growing up, I realized that it was not only a peculiar attitude of my grandmother, but it's very common to the people of Barlow where I was born and brought up, and then to a very large extent to most Nigerians. Now the salient part about what my grandmother did was it actually cured the pain and it actually relieves the um, diseases. And then as a chemist, I grew up with this popular slogan that what on earth is not chemistry. And that made me more inquisitive. It means that everything that is existing around us is actually chemistry. As an analytical chemist, We are so inquisitive about everything around us. We want to find out what is in the food we eat, what is in the water that we drink, what is in the air that we breathe, what is in the environment that we are living in. That is what we have been doing. Now, when we're talking about what we eat, most of you here will agree with me that Nigerian food, a good Nigerian food, can help you look good as well as healthy. Now, a diet can be nutraceutical as well as pharmaceutical. That means a diet can be a source of nutrients, and it can also act as a source of medicine to fight against diseases and illness. Now, for thousands of years, this is no news, that actually eating a healthy diet or a balanced diet can help you live better. But what we know today is great. But there is a need for us to harness the incredible power of mind to make all these things work more effective for us. It has been realized today that physical and mental matching is very important for health and overall well-being. If there's anything that has actually helped me and many of my likes for the past decade, I think it's eating healthy and mediation. Now, plant-based food or plant-forward eating pattern are actually food that focuses primarily on plants. This food can either be nuts, oil, legumes, whole grains. Beans and what have you. So you don't have to be a vegetarian or a vegan. Like me, most of us like eating meat and milk. These plants actually are abundance in creating substances that we call phytochemicals. Phytochemicals has been referred to by one of my colleagues in the Department of Chemistry, University of Meduguri, as fibers. Oh chemicals. So these are substances that actually prevent cellular damages and they also act as anti-inflammatory. These substances have been actually helping to fight so many diseases.
And several studies, chemistry studies and other fields of sciences have been investigating about people that actually focus on plant-based diets as opposed to proposed foods. To a large extent, so many studies have revealed that those that focus on plant-based diets can actually fight major killer diseases like cancers, even in their third stage. <laughs> this is because the plant-based diets, they have the capacity to actually prevent and then stop major diseases. Now, Um, talking about plants, there's a need for us to understand the flora of Nigeria. So several names have actually been given to the flora of Nigeria according to the regions where they grow. This flora occurs severally in several places, so some species have several names. And then some of the names have actually been added to the Nigerian flora known as the Kiri. But actually, it has not been added to the much of the one that was done by the West Tropical region, that is the Hutchinson. So there is no any authoritative name or local name that has been linked to the botanical identification of such plants. Um, in the Northeast Nigeria, we will know that actually the Northeast is lacking high in human index, human development index. There is also a very high rate of illiteracy, and then there is a high population that can depend on the health facility, and then the access as well to these facilities is very low. The decline in economy has also left many with no option than to focus on plant-based medication. So as I said, it is a very common practice of the people of the Northeast Nigeria. And this data can be attached to the fact that plant-based medication has actually have so Even though in this century, in the total and the 20th century, that um, the medical development has gone very far. But as I said, due to some factor of um, the economy and what have you, have left uh, people with no other option than to focus on the plant-based uh, medication. And then as well, they also believe that the plant-based material, the plant-based diets, they act very fast, they are affordable, and then they are easily accessible. Now, I want to talk a little about Borno, where I come from. And then when you're talking about Borno, actually, you cannot separate the history of Borno from the history of its towns, just like we had the very first speaker talk about the McNaughton's history of Borno and the different towns that have been um, developed. Periods of consolidation and extreme supremacy coinciding with the urban centers from the 14th century the 15th century when Borno was then because of Gamo, and then to the 18th century. Borno actually rose as a political capital and then as a center of cultural civilization with political aspirations going far and beyond. This lasted for more than 300 years. Before the development of power and then subsequently the of Rabi that destroyed a major part of Borlo then. It was later restored, partly restored actually, by Shio Umar Garbi, but it was never restored to its initial Borlo state. And then this might be due to the uh, imposition of the British colonial rule, where they made Borlo as a protectorate of the northern Nigeria.
This is actually not just to celebrate the emergence of towns, but rather to stimulate these cultures and then what is the factors in the urban centers. Now, fast forward to what we are seeing and experiencing here in Borno, how Borno has actually been bedeviled by extreme poverty and hunger. It has also made our people go back to their ancient tradition and culture on largely depending of planet as the most available source of medication. Now, what I have here is actually a display of one of the most common plant that is found available in most parts of Borno and other regions of Nigeria and Northern Nigeria. This plant is actually Boswella ceiling. It has a name known as the frankincense that is in English. In French, it is called the Avre Ascens. In Kaluri, it is called the Kapi. And then in Hausa, it is called Adarami. This plant occurs naturally in the environment, and almost every part of this plant actually serves as a medicine in one way or the other. Several studies and several investigations have been carried out on different parts of this plant, and they have proven to have a lot of phytochemicals that serves as anti-epileptic, anti-diabetic, anti-inflammatory, analgesics, and what have you. The plant actually has a folk folklore use among the southern Borno people, that is the Babrubara people, they call it Debro in Babur. It has been reported in the management of epilepsy, pneumonia, asthma, and so many cardiovascular diseases. It has also been undergone through some quantitative and qualitative analysis, and then the phytochemicals reveal some secondary metabolites, such as the flavonoids, the tannins, the steroids, the resins, the basalts, and what have you. They have also been studied on the root and then the stem back extract. And it also revealed some, some even primary metabolites, like carbohydrate is a primary metabolite, which have been found in the root and stem back extract. And then they also contain in the glycosides. Studies have subjected this flood under the gas chromatography mass spectrophotometry, and it revealed a lot of chemicals, a lot of very important chemicals that can serve as uh, different uh, anti-inflammatory, anti-analgesic, and what have you. Now, you want the medicinal use. In the northern part of Nigeria, due to its ethno-medicinal performance, actually, a lot of the parts of the plant has been uh, analyzed. And then we see that uh, in the northern Nigeria, the bath is actually boiled. And then when it boils, they use it in bathing so that it could relieve some high fever. It could relieve rheumatism. And then sometimes the flute is also taken when it is boiled so that it will aid with gastrointestinal trouble. The Fulani people use it as a cold infusion for snake bites. And then the fresh bark is also used in Adamawa State. They take it, when they take it at the, after some time, there is a vomiting. And then that relieves a person from symptoms of giddiness as well as a palpitation. Now, the Fulani people are actually also making use of the unit of it, as I said, in the curing of snake bias. This is also recognized worldwide in places like India, in their traditional and invading medicines. They also use it in um, curing a lot of skin diseases, gastric disorder, pulmonary diseases, and what have you. Now, with time, I realized that what my grandmother has been doing is actually philanthropic. What we needed to do now is actually 
to also look at the culture and traditions of our people and see that we can also find medications made easily available, non-resistant and very effective for our people. This has also been noticed by the World Health Organization, whereby they realized that there is an increased demand, not only in the developing countries, but also in the developed countries. This might be attributed to the um, substances like non-narcotic, and then they have little slight effect. And as I said, they are readily available for the poor, and then they are actually abundant in nature. So, we can only follow back and then have our medication using the traditional medicine and then plant-free diet.